want to give thanks to God once again, even as we share from God's word, God's word which Jesus says, that heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word shall not pass away. Today I would want to share on this lesson, fearlessness in trouble. At the time of speaking, we are in the middle of, of the year 2020, and it has been a year that has been filled with many challenges uh, for all of us, and we are just halfway. And I would want to say that we can face the rest of the year 2020 with either fear or faith. But my prayer is that we may receive God's love in our hearts so that the gift of faith that comes from him will enable us to stand and to overcome the storms that are ranging now and the ones that are still ahead. During another time of trouble almost 2,000 years ago, we find God's servant Paul encouraging believers in the book of Romans chapter 5, and would want us to read Romans chapter 5, verse 1 through verse 5. He says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have access by faith into the grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who uh, was given to us. Now, Paul begins by saying to the believers there that they have been justified by faith, and therefore we have been justified by faith, and therefore we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that faith, we are able to have access to the grace of God uh, by which we are able to stand and we are also able to rejoice in hope of the glory of God that is going to be revealed. When he says that we are justified, uh, would, would say justification means being made righteous just as if we have never sinned. So we are justified, made righteous, just as if we had never sinned because of faith that we have in Jesus Christ. Later, he also talks of how we are also justified by his blood in verse 9, when he says, much more than having been justified by his blood, we shall be saved uh, uh, through him. So justification, justified through faith, and also we are justified through the blood of Jesus. But in this particular portion, he says we are justified by faith. Now, then he goes on to say this. Through that faith that we have been given by God, we can rejoice not just in the hope that we have, but also we can rejoice in verse 4, he says this, we can also rejoice in tribulations or glory in tribulations. Why? Why should we be able to glory and rejoice in the midst of the troubles, in the midst of the tribulations, in the midst of the hardships that we are going through as believers in the nation and in the nations. And he begins to explain the reason in that verse three. He says this, tribulation or trouble produces perseverance. That word that is, the New King James Version talks of uh, perseverance. It is interpreted also in, others, in other translations as endurance. Tribulation or trouble produces endurance or produces patience. Now, he says we are able to glory, 
we are able to rejoice even in trouble because trouble produces in us something that is very vital and he calls it patience, endurance, or perseverance. We read in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 6, for continuity, let's begin reading verses 11. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end, that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. That which will cause us to attain the promises that God has given us, the heritage that God has given us in his word, which is his promises, is not just faith, but scripture says faith and patience. And the thing that is going to create in us patience, along with faith that will give us, uh, will give us those promises, patience is also included. And I want to say this, tribulation produces that patience that is needed uh, to be able to inherit God's promises. We also read in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, reading from verse 36, the writer says, for you have need of endurance so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. So notice he says this, we need endurance, we need patience so that having done the will of God, we may receive the promises God has given us. To receive God's promises, we do not just need faith, but we also need patience. And patience comes through the tribulations, the trouble, the difficulties that we have to go through. And the writer goes on to say in verse 37, for yet a little while, and who is coming will come and will not tarry. But the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Verse 39, but we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. We need endurance, brethren. We need patience uh, so that having done all, we may receive the promise. That which will manifest that we are indeed enduring is that in the midst of difficulties, are we going to remain steadfast to the promises of God? Or are we going to draw back from our faith in God? Do we just believe in God because it is convenient? And when things become difficult, we draw back. Afflictions and troubles, they come to test us so that we may know where we often falter and begin seeking God, as we have said in the past, seeking God in those afflictions until we get to that place of knowing the will of God and actually doing the will of God under all circumstances and under all situations. And so we should not be among those who draw back from the faith those who turn away from God and we no longer become doers of the word of God in the course of trouble. Trouble comes to check our hearts to see if indeed we have patience. And one of the things that is not easy for us to graduate in is this lesson of patience. For example, when you tell somebody to wait for you, Many of us, in the midst of it, we become weary and we give up. Just the way King Saul is told by Samuel the prophet to wait for him before he goes to battle. 
And when he saw like Samuel is delaying, he ended up offering sacrifices, a burnt sacrifices that he was not legally, or rather he was not legally allowed to. It was the work of a priest. And in this case, uh, Samuel, the servant of God. The lesson of patience, we can only graduate when we endure afflictions and to really know that we are patient. And going on, he goes on to say, God's servant continues to say this after talking of patience. He says this, patience produces character. Patience produces character. And character is a combination of a number of qualities that would include loyalty, discipline, being steadfast, being a person of integrity, a person that is honest. And these qualities, one can only know that you have attained to th those good qualities through the difficulties that may cause us to be tempted. For example, not to be loyal, and in this case, loyalty to God, or not to be honest before people or before God. There are characters in scriptures, for example, Joseph, Daniel, and others like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They went through difficulty times, at times, through much affliction, but we know them to be men of character. For example, a person like Joseph, when he's tempted by Potiphar's wife, Joseph is able to remain steadfast, is able uh, to be loyal to his God. He actually says, how can I do such a great sin against my God? We are able to know he was a man of character even through the afflictions he went through and remained loyal to God. And friends, we can only know that which is within us. If we are men of integrity, men of character, through the afflictions that come, and the troubles that God allows to come our way, if we fail in that day of trouble, it actually means, as we saw last week, and we saw what the writer of Psalms 119 says, before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. Troubles come to test us. If we may call, we may even call troubles, we may call, for example, judgments as crises. The crisis we, have, we are going through, the Lord would want to raise a men and women of character that God can be able to testify of and say the way he, he talked of Job in the book of Job chapter 1, and he says to, uh, to, to, the, to, his, uh, to Satan, have you seen my servant Job? And he describes him to be a man of character. And I pray in the afflictions that we go through, may God raise us to be a people that are going to be men and women of character, that are going to be steadfast, that, for example, when you make a decision, I am going to do the basics in scripture. For example, being one that is dedicated to reading and studying the word of God. You do it in season and out of season. For example, the issue of generosity. Are you going to fulfill, for example, the commandments of God? to give so that it may be given back to us, a good measure, uh, pressed down, shaken together, in under all situations and circumstances. We may call you a generous person, and we only call you generous because you are living in abundance, and you give the surplus. But in affliction, even when things are shaken and God blesses you, and even the blessings he blesses you with it may not appear to be sufficient. You still become loyal to God's word. I want to say this, trouble brings character according to God's word. And he says this, character produces hope. And that hope 
that character produces. It's not just that uh, shallow hope, but that hope that one remains hopeful under all circumstances. A hope that you have under all circumstances. And this hope is precious, is enduring. And why is it, is it, uh, is it precious and enduring? Because it has been tested through fire. That even when you are threatened with death, you still remain hopeful. Like God's servant, uh, Job, who says this, I know my redeemer liveth. Or as he says also in the book of Job chapter 13, uh, when he says, though he slay, he slay me, yet will I trust in him. When Job says, I have hope in God, it is a hope that has gone through flames of fire. And the man does not deny God. That hope becomes precious and, and enduring. That hope becomes unshakable even under whatever one is going through. It, does. it will not matter what is surrounding you. That character produces that hope that is not shallow. And remember, in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 6, talking of hope, that hope that was in God's servant uh, Abraham, he says this in verse 19, this hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and that which enters the presence behind the veil. He talks of this hope as an anchor for the soul. That one will be able to say to, to one soul, have peace, my soul. Your trust is in God who never fails. That hope that is able to enter into God's presence, it becomes an anchor for the soul such that you cannot be shaken. You're able to say, like Paul, that uh, I know whom I have believed in. I know the one I have believed in, and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed to him until that day of the coming of the Lord. That hope that is able to enter the presence of God. And remember, uh, the word of God tells us in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, in verse 6, but without faith it is impossible to place him and who comes to God must believe that God is and is a rewarder of them that seek him diligent. He says, faith, uh, without faith, it is impossible to place God. But he says in verse 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That faith, it is based on things hoped for, the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. If we are going to have faith that is in the heart, we need to have faith as a substance of things hoped for. What are we hoping for? That God shall surely come, though he tarries, yet shall he come. Somebody has said that courage is not the absence of fear, but it is overcoming fear. Courage, which, is, which, uh, which really manifests the faith we have, is not the absence of fear. It is overcoming fear. And somebody else has also said, fear has killed more people than death. But the word of God tells us in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, it says it's, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Fear is not a gift of the Holy Spirit. But we have received the spirit of power, love, and even of a sound mind, or of discipline, of self-control. And going back to the book of uh, Romans chapter 5, 
After saying that uh, perseverance uh, brings character and character hope, he says this, now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Now, to be able to come to this level of having faith in God, even through, beloved ones, through afflictions, there is one key thing that will help us to be able to persevere through afflictions in faith and as we acquire character and even hope. And it is this one fact, the love of God that has been shed abroad in our, in our hearts, even through the Holy Spirit. When we come to realize that God has loved us, and now combining that verse 5 of Romans chapter 5 with that scripture in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, Paul saying that we have not received a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. The thing that will deliver, cause us to be delivered from fear is knowing this love of God, that God loves us. That even when he allows afflictions or trouble to come our way, as we have said, he has the best of our interest in his mind. We need to know he loves us. And as we saw last week, that he who did not spare his own son, Jesus Christ, but gave him up for us all, will he also not with him give us all things? He loves us dearly. But there is something he desires to be produced in us so that we may be able to bring him glory under all circumstances and situations. We need to know that he has given us not the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power and love and of a sound mind. And John says in his first letter, chapter 4, verse 18, he says this, perfect love casts out fear. When, the Lord has, when we allow the Lord to shed his love abroad in our hearts through his Holy Spirit, and we are filled with the love for God. And as John says, we love because he first loved us. When we begin to appreciate the love God has loved us with, that even in whatever situations and circumstances we are in, God's love is assured. We will be driven, fear will be driven away. When we really love God, we shall not operate in fear, but we shall have courage. We shall have boldness. We shall be able to know Jesus is still on the throne. He hears and answers prayer. And whatever I am going through, God is in authority. God is in control. Paul, writing the Corinthians in his second letter to the Corinthians, he says in chapter 4, verse 17, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. For we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Brethren, the troubles we are going through, or the troubles we will still go through in the days to come. Let's remember they are temporal. But in the midst of those troubles, in the midst of those afflictions, there is something eternal. There is something that is, that is of far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory that is being acquired, that we are acquiring. It is in God's kindness that at times he allows these things to come. And as they come, may our eyes be on Jesus Christ, who, for the joy that was set before him, 
He was able to endure trouble. He was able to endure afflictions. He knew there is a prize. There is a crown of glory awaiting me if I become faithful till death, if I fix my eyes on Jesus Christ. And friends, Jesus Christ is our perfect example. And as we finish, there is a song that Isaiah says is going to be sung in Judah. In Isaiah chapter 26, he says there is a song that will be sung in the land of Judah. And I pray that we'll be able to sing this song from verses 1 through verse 9. Reading from the New Living Translation, part B of us one says, Our city is strong. We are surrounded by walls of God's salvation. Brethren, may this be our song. That we are that city that God is building. We are God's children. And we are surrounded by the walls of God's salvation. God so loved us that he gave his only begotten son. That if we believe in him, we shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. We are assured of the, of the salvation of the Lord. Though afflictions come, whatever we may go through, may we know we are surrounded by walls of salvation. That should be our song. In the midst of trouble, when everything that can be shaken is being shaken, may we sing this song. He says in verse 2, open the gates to all who are righteous, allow the faithful to enter. May we be among these righteous ones that will be allowed to enter into this great city. But friends, verse 3 says, you will keep him in perfect peace. All who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. The New King James Version says, you will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. That peace that we are promised by God is not dependent on circumstances or situations. We may be going through the same difficulties with them that do not know the Lord. But as for us, our peace comes from this assurance. The Lord is our salvation. And not only so, our minds are stayed in the Lord. Our minds are not stayed in what we see with our naked eyes. Brethren, we are not supposed to walk by sight. Scripture says, we walk not by sight, but we walk by faith. And how do we walk in faith? Our minds should be stayed on the Lord. And he says this, because he trusts in me, the Lord will keep, uh, will keep one in perfect peace, one who trusts in the Lord. It goes on to say in verses 5, For he brings down those who dwell on high, the lofty city, he lays it low. He lays it low to the ground, he brings it down to the dust. And he says in verse 7, The way of the just is uprightness. O oh, most upright, you weigh the path of the just. Friends, the Lord has weighed the path we are going through, if indeed we are the just ones. And as Paul told the Corinthians in, chapter, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, no temptation has overtaken us. That's not common to man. God is faithful. Do not allow us to be tempted beyond our strength. But with every temptation, you also provide a way of escape so that you may be able to endure it. The Lord... Uh, he weighs the path of the just. Yes, in the way of your judgments, O Lord, we have waited for you. 
the desire of our soul is for your name and for the remembrance of you. May this be our song, that we'll be able to tell the Lord, we are waiting on you. Even in these situations, we know we are going to pass through victoriously. And after we pass through, we shall be able to say with the psalm, it is good I was afflicted, that I may know your word, that I may know your ways. He also says this, My, the desire of our soul is, of, is, is for your name and for the remembrance of you. Verse 9, he says this, With my soul I have desired you in the night. Yes, by my spirit within me I will seek you early. For when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. May our hearts desire of the Lord, even in this night season. Biblically, a day starts in the night. It starts in the evening. There's a great day that is ahead of us. We're just passing through a certain darkness, but the day is about to break, and we shall have learned a few things in the midst of this night. In this night, beloved, let's desire the Lord. Yes, let our spirits seek the Lord early, early in this day, because God's judgments are on the earth, and the in the midst of this trouble, the nations shall be able to learn righteousness. How shall they learn righteousness? Even through us, because we have been able to persevere. And the Lord will be able to say the way he said of Jesus, uh, commanding, the, uh, saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well, pleased in. I'm well pleased, listen to him. The Lord is raising our people in the midst of this affliction that you'll be able to tell the world, listen to these ones. May the Lord bless us in the midst of whatever we are going through. Difficult as it may be, may we learn to have patience in the Lord as we wait in the Lord. May we learn to have character, to be faithful to the Lord in the midst of whatever situations and circumstances we are in. And may we have our hope in the Lord. And let it be an anchor for our souls, such that we are not going to be shaken from the faith, knowing very well that this is just for a season, but there is something eternal that is being created in us, even character. The Lord Jesus bless you. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for the assurance we have in your word that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. Your word also reminds us that perfect love casts away fear. And we pray, shed your love abroad in our hearts, that we may be assured of your love, the love you have loved us with, an everlasting love. The promises we have from you who loves us, that you shall never leave us, you shall never forsake us. And Lord, that that assurance may deliver us from every spirit of fear. That fear of which scripture says, fear torments. That we may not be tormented by fear, but we shall have boldness. We shall be able to be steadfast, knowing that you who has promised us, you are faithful. Lord, I pray in the midst of whatever we are going through, we may be able, our Lord, to to be like those who through faith and, and patience inherit the promises like your servant Abraham, our father in faith. And other characters we have in scripture who, who had both faith and perseverance. They were able to endure whatever came their way and they did not deny your name even to the point of death. Lord, the difficulties we are going through, our eyes shall be fixed on you, knowing that you love us with an everlasting love. That, Lord, we may be a people that you are going to demonstrate on the earth and say, these are my children. They follow me not because of the goodness I have given them, given them in the physical realm, but because they have trusted in me. We bless you, dear Father, for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
گالبسیان